All right, here we go. Let's adjust my table. Hey guys, Adrian here, business coach, mentor, entrepreneur. Uh, talking to you today with a live Q and A session. If you're online, say hello. Uh, I am at a cafe at the moment. I work from many cafes during the day, so um, let me just get the best sort of position and lighting here, if that's cool. So if you're online, say hello and uh, let me know if you can hear me properly so I know that everything's working fine. Uh, again, I'm at a cafe, so if it's noisy, that's why um, you'll hear people coming and going. But I've got a lot of questions to get through today because uh, I normally do Q&A Tuesday, but it's goddamn Wednesday. Uh, I had a problem with my Facebook pages app yesterday, which just was not working. I don't know if you felt the same, uh, had the same problem, but I did. So, okay, here we go. Uh, if you're online, say hello. If not, I hope the people who ask the questions get this at a certain time because um, there's a lot of stuff I need to get through. So I've rambled on too much already. Ready to go? Here we go. Uh, I've got a question from uh, Murat, which is around uh, suicide prevention. He specifically asked around teenage suicide prevention, uh, how to improve self-worth self and skills that you can use daily, uh, setting goals and the importance of setting goals. So let me start off by saying that uh, I am not qualified to talk about um, suicide prevention and all that kind of stuff, okay? Like anything that I say really is my opinion. Uh, it's not gospel truth. Uh, if anyone's having bouts, battles, uh, battles troubles with um, depression, anxiety, all that kind of stuff, there are plenty of professionals that you should see. Um, however, I'll give you my opinion and uh, you can decide whether this is good advice or not or good opinion or not or however you want to you uh, deal with it, okay? So... I won't just talk to suicide prevention with teenagers. I'll talk to, um, to suicide prevention because this is something that I, I have had, had some personal experience with. Um, a mate of mine a couple of weeks ago said that um, he's having some bad thoughts and uh, he's had these thoughts in the past and that uh, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things that he's considered uh, taking his own life. Okay, so... Uh, what I do in that scenario is I put things into perspective and I kind of said, uh, and explained all the good things that you, you know, the reasons why you're, you're here, uh, the reasons why we have ups and downs and things like that. But then I, I kind of drew it back to uh, an emotional attachment or um, an emotional charge that had been sort of embedded in place at a young age. So what I feel, and, and oh, just to, to put a lid on that story, so... I sent him to a good buddy of mine, Scott Franklin, uh, one of my best mates uh, who we work with. And Scotty's, you know, talked a lot of people off the ledge. And uh, as simply, his, his uh, techniques that he uses are basically resilience techniques, okay? And that's what I think a lot of us in life are missing because our parents could never teach this and it was never really widely known. And so there's a couple of things that you can do on a daily basis, which really comes down to, and I've talked about this a lot in other live videos, around aligning your values and your beliefs uh, and creating passion, meaning, and purpose to everything that you do in life. So therefore, you feel connected, you feel driven, you feel on purpose, which is why I feel a lot of people do decide to go down the route of, of leaving this planet is simply because they feel disconnected. Uh, they feel disconnected from self and they feel disconnected from others. And when we think largely about, you know, all the things that we do in life to achieve, to, you know, accomplish, all that kind of stuff, what seems to be missing in a lot of training and a lot of literature and a lot of text is connection with others, with connection with yourself, self-awareness, self-meaning, self-love, self-improvement, like all the self stuff is what seems to be missing in today's uh, coaching, training, uh, you know, like all that kind of stuff. We're too enthralled in the entrepreneurial fucking, you know, let's achieve everything, get the fanciest cars and live the best life. When internally you're not put together well. And unfortunately, we've got really bad leaders in, in as far as the people that we've grown up with because they they've, haven't been given the, the user's manual either. And so they're flying blind and then we're leading from them as well. So... I feel that a lot of suicide can be prevent 
prevented simply by people learning more about themselves, connecting more with their purpose, connecting more with their passion, non-conforming in terms of like our school system and you know workplace systems, all that kind of stuff helps people conform to a particular model, which to me is broken. So the more that we get away from that and get more towards uh, understanding ourselves and what lights us up and what makes us tick and how we operate, like that self-awareness is such a huge thing. And the more connected that we feel to our mission and purpose and to ourselves, then we don't feel like we're separate from others. We feel like we're one and the same. And that to me will keep a lot of people uh, in this planet, uh, on this planet, as opposed to um, removing themselves, okay? So that's all I'm gonna say about that, but I'm gonna give you, if there's something that you're after in terms of suicide prevention for teenagers, a project that I've been working on for the last six months is called Mentor You. It's specifically a program for parents and teenagers to work together and, and learn uh, resilience techniques, learn real life skills that the teachers are just too overwhelmed to teach uh, in their syllabus. They're too overwhelmed with fucking algebra and shit like that that we'll never use. Um, so this uh, program is called Mentor You, right? I'll, I'll pop it in the comments and you can have a look at it because I think it's a brilliant program. Uh, it's a membership based. It's hardly like, I mean, it's so ridiculously affordable. It's not funny. It's meant to not discriminate to anyone. Um, so all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds. So I highly recommend that anyone who's got teenage kids would look at that program called Mentor You. I'll pop it in the comments box. Okay, here's another thing that I just want to say. As a father of three young kids, I've got three boys, 11, 8, and 6. Now, what we've got happening in our, in our society, in our lifetime, is we've got our parents who were like of the adage of, you know, work hard, get a safe, secure job, all that shit. And then we've got us, which are, are trying to, in most cases, do what our parents could not do for us. So we've kind of let ourselves in a position of a, a, a false reality. We want to have material possessions and things. And then we've disconnected ourselves from our children. Our children end up being um, spoiled little brats. Uh, who want everything, who think fucking we're just going to go buy you know, shit all the time. And that's how we we serve love and, and uh, is by buying stuff and going to fancy places. So we create a false reality of what life's true meaning and passion and purpose is. However, if you're like me, uh, you have got what's called crystal children. If you don't know much about crystal children, I'll go and uh, look up like what, what they are. But basically, these kids are so far more advanced than us like it's not funny they are old souls they are people that are like to me have been here many times before they have self-worth and self-value and self-awareness that we took 25 years to get if at all but they've got it at six and eight and eleven trust me i've got three of these guys at home okay and they are so self-assured and self-aware uh, of who they are and what they want to do and so it's our job not to fuck them up by um by putting them into like compartments, you know, and putting them into uh, the conformed way. So it's, it's a very tough gig to me because I have basically got to say, I want you to be who you want to be. I want to give you free reign to be creative. Uh, but at the same time, you've got to be a parent, have fucking responsibilities and still guide them. Uh, but it's, it's hard. School's working against me. Uh, old values and beliefs are working against me. And um, it, it's a real trouble thing. So if you're having trouble with your teenagers or younger children, I would really uh, employ you to go and look up anything to do with crystal children. It's like, it's a fascinating thing. And as soon as you understand these kids, as soon as you understand to uh, serve them with their values and with their beliefs, like life starts to become not, not, I was going to say easier, but you understand it more, okay? And so the disconnect is they feel you don't get them, you feel they don't get you, and then there's always this Mexican standoff between why aren't you doing what I fucking say? And they're like, well, I, I don't have to because um, I already know more than you, and uh, I know that that's a useless thing that I'm learning right now. So they're questioning religion, they're questioning why they have to do certain things. It's, it's just an amazing uh, thing to learn. So go ahead and learn that. Uh, this is going to be a long one today. I've got like fucking 10 questions, so I'm going to get through them as, much, as quickly as I can. Mira, goal setting, 
is important. Um, I set goals, but I set it as long as it's congruent with my values and beliefs. So again, I used to have a belief or a value around material possessions and money and things and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't now. I have a value around experiences, not things. I have a value around um, connection, service. I have a value around doing whatever the fuck I want, whenever the fuck I want it. Um, choices, freedom, all that kind of stuff. That's my values. So I do everything. My goal setting is always in alignment with what I want to achieve. And so uh, that comes at a cost because it's not what most people are doing. So uh, most people, my closest family for one, see me as someone who is, I don't even know what the fuck I do. You know what I mean? Like, how do you sell intellectual property? Um, you know, how do you uh, just, you know, work on the internet? You know, all that kind of stuff. How do you not, uh, like, want security and, and, you know, all that kind of shit? You know what I mean? Like, it's a rule against the grain. So I would say that, yes, set goals. They're super important. I would first work out your values and your beliefs, and then I would set goals that are congruent with those values and beliefs. If there's any disparity between not achieving your goals and, uh, and achieving them, it's in the belief, okay? I have a value for money and nice things in life. I have a belief that money doesn't grow on trees, that money's a root of all evil, um, that uh, I don't deserve uh, any extra money. The belief will always win, it's powerful. So uh, I would use techniques to basically cancel out that belief and uh, reinstall the new one. It's a whole other fucking training, but I can't uh, do that now. Uh, I run full days on this, so if you want to know more about uh, a program that I run with my buddy Scott Franklin called Master the Seven Domains of Life, just comment seven domains and I'll send you the link. Um, it's a phenomenal day and not because I'm running it. It's, it's actually a life-changing um, experience. Okay, thank you for your question, Mira. Alicia, uh, I've got a new business. I'm constantly overcomplicating things. I'm getting overwhelmed, and I want to keep a positive mindset. Alicia, with a new business, that is a common thing because you're trying to become all things to all people. Uh, read the book called The One Thing. Uh, the, it's basically about what is the one thing that you can do right now which is going to serve you and your business. So... Uh, it's typically not getting business cards or, or fucking getting an email address or some shit like that. It's actually marketing to people. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that you should be doing all the time. So I would just ask yourself, what should I be doing? What's the one thing that I can do right now, which is that 20% activity that produces 80% of the results? What's that thing? Alicia, I want to make a little side note, okay? So you've mentioned um, your new beers and essential oils and all that kind of stuff, um, which I get. But I actually snuck around your Facebook page and noticed that you're actually a beautiful singer. And so I'm going to question your uh, purpose and values around that. And I'm just going to put it out there that I think that if I was you, uh, I'd be um, serving that beautiful voice of yours and trying to get that out into the, into the world. So that's my thing on that. The one thing, go and read it. Okay, Catherine, uh, social media is not my thing and I get frustrated. Uh, my business is uh, healing and, and things like that. Social media is not anyone's thing, uh, Catherine. So uh, the thing is, it's a learned, it's something you have to learn. I can guarantee if you don't learn, you'll fucking fall off this, the face of the planet. People will forget you very, very quickly. You can quickly understand that social media is consuming everyone's lives. Most people have up to five social media platforms, which they flick between all fucking day, a hundred times a day. Okay, so you need to be on there if you want your business to flourish, all right? So um, the, the way that you don't get frustrated with it is you learn. You're only frustrated because you don't know, and then that is a block to you. You're like, I don't know what to do. I get frustrated. Well, it's just a new skill. Go and learn that new skill, and then you, therefore you'll learn what to do with social media. Um, again, I run fucking full-day courses on this, okay? So I've got tons of training and program. Go to my website, uh, or if you want to know uh, around about my social media breakthrough for business bootcamp, just type in bootcamp and I'll send you all the details. I've got an online program as well as a full day event. Uh, I see that Lauren's on board, Jasmine's on board. Um, you guys have all been there. Like again, I lay this all out so you've got the exact blueprint that you need in order to flourish online. So I I think you're local to me. So we can definitely get together and work on that. Okay. Thank you for your question, by the way. I really appreciate it. Uh, Sladana, how do I clear blocks around um, creating a site for single women when I am married? Okay, 
uh, very, very easy. You claim that space. All right, I'll give you an example. Um, what is the lady's name? There is a lady, uh, Barbara DeAngelis, something like that. Um, she teaches people about uh, marriage and about relationships and all that kind of stuff. She's been divorced nine times, I believe. Okay, so um, if she can own that space, then you can too. Okay, you don't have to, uh, like you've been single at one time, so you know you're married now, so you've accomplished the goal. And what you're trying to do is help people be happy being single and then help them uh, get to know themselves. And then they can go and find someone else when they're happy with themselves and understand what they want. They can go and find someone else. That's great. Uh, to me, it's just a decision. Own that space, become an expert, become a leader, become a leading authority, have people know you like you and trust you and respect you in that space. And don't give a fuck about what anyone thinks. If you think you are right, if you think you got your talents, then back yourself 110% and just go and do it. That's my uh, tip for, the, for today. Alison Morris, thank you. Sorry, Sladana, thank you for your question. I really appreciate it. Alison Morris, how do I focus and stop uh, shiny object itis? Again, I get back to the previous question, Alison, around the one thing. I constantly question myself because I get distracted all the time as well. I love shiny new objects and, and get distracted by that, especially this fucking thing. You know, it's like, you know, the thing that causes me the most joy and the most pain at the same time. So I just focus on the things that I have to do. I set intentions every morning as to what I want to uh, achieve for the day. And then I focus on getting that thing. If the one thing that I need to do is to create a marketing piece that which is going to go out to, um, you know, the people that I want to attract in my business, and that's it. The one thing that I need to do today is to uh, focus with uh, Lauren, who's one of my clients. Um, and actually, it's a great thing that Lauren's on board because Lauren is the founder of Mentor You, who I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, live. So uh, I would definitely connect with uh, Lauren Hayden, who's on the feed right now, and uh, ask about Mentor You. Or if Lauren, if you're still around, which I think you are, um, just type in the Mentor You tag. Uh, and, and people can go to that, okay? So if not, I'll do it after this anyway. Alison, back to your question. Focus on the one thing that you need to do. Constantly ask yourself, what do I need to do right now? Is this wasting time? Am I fucking around with the things that I should be doing? If you are, stop immediately what you're doing and go to that thing that you should be doing and that's going to make a difference in your business. All right? That's all there is to it. Just focus on those things. There's typically one or two things that you can do really, really well that will make a fundamental business. Um, because I know your business and I know that you're going to be uh, uh, doing consultations all the time and then you want to do things outside of that, fucking hard work. That's just like, that's what it is. It, it, there's going to be times where you're going to be working uh, the, the candle at both ends, but it's not going to be like that always. And the means is to have something at the end that can stop you from working so many clients and have you have your message you know, exponentially grow and scale. And so if you don't do it, then what's the cost? The cost is you're going to be doing your you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 sessions a month and uh, you're going to burn out. That's the facts. Okay. Thank you for your question, though, by the way. I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, Mary Bobrokas, how do I rebrand from one-on-one sessions to group training and re retreats um, very very simple run uh, live events or run in-room events and and have people come along to witness your expertise the things that you have to say and then invite them into a group setting um, so you can do this online and offline and that's how I would do it. Again, if you want any more social media help around this, around branding, around how to do it, I mean, like, your message has to speak to problems. Your message has to um, connect with people. Your message has to have people in a position where they get to know you, like you, and trust you. But ultimately, you can't sell a secret. So you need to promote yourself in such a way that says, hey, come along to this thing. I will show you what I uh, what problem that I solve and then after that if you want to come and work with me Which most of you won't but some of you will I'm happy to take those small percentage of people that will into a group setting and we can work together All right, that's branding marketing. That's that's selling your message over and over and over again and building that pipeline of people and eventually what will start off as uh, you know a Half a dozen people will turn into 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 or a thousand that's just the way you do it. Keep chipping away at that and stay the course. Okay?
Thank you. Good question. I really appreciate it. Sadie, Sadie, you're a part of my social media breakthrough group and you asked this in that group, but I'm going to answer it here. Um, but I'll share this anyway. You want to learn the best way to launch a Facebook group. Uh, the best way to launch a Facebook group is to start a Facebook group and then promote it. Okay, I have a Facebook group called Social Media Breakthrough for Business. I constantly promote uh, on Facebook that you can join it. I invite other business owners to come on board and have a um, to have a look and see what they can learn. That's my little fishing pond of people that I uh, create on purpose. It serves my business. I get to serve them, and it gives me more of the people of the the people that I want in my business. Okay, and the people that want me. So if you like it, you stay. If you don't, you go. But to answer your question very simply, start it, promote it. Keep adding the material to it all the time. Keep investing in, in your your um, knowledge and expertise. Keep connecting. Make sure that you're always present. Set up a bit of a sequence of what you're going to do on each day. Have a bit of a structure around that and just go for it. Okay. I think that's all the questions. Man, I got smashed this week. And I'm sorry that it's a day late. But for those of you who are online and still online, Thank you so much for hanging around and listening to me. Thank you for um, your questions. And I am truly, truly grateful for this opportunity. If you like this, please send me the likes and the loves across the screen and uh, give me some appreciation. That would be great. If you know someone that could benefit from this training, please share this with them because it just helps me so much to get my message out. Again, if you want to know more about the seven domains, just type in seven domains and I'll tell you all about that one-day workshop that I do with Scott Franklin, and that's a transformative, transformative life workshop. If you want to know about social media, uh, just type in boot camp and I'll send you all the details for that. I've got an online community as well as an in-room yeah. workshop, which I'll be doing in Sydney in a couple of months' time. If you want to learn about the Mentor Your Program, if you've got teenagers then uh, go and speak to Lauren Hayden or just type in Mentor You and, uh, into Facebook and find all of that. There's a ton of free gold information. It's a project that I've been working on with Scott Franklin and Lauren Hayden for the last six months. It's a fucking game changer. It's something that kids, uh, teenagers and parents need. And I'm telling you, you will not regret uh, joining that program because it's, it, like I said, it's a game changer and it's saving lives already. And I know that. Um, hand on heart that that's exactly what it's doing. So again, thank you for your time. Until we meet again, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.